Hello everyone and welcome to the GEM user group where we're going to be talking about nurture strategies. It's really great to see you all here. My name is Marissa and I'm the marketing events manager at GEM and your host for today. Before we get started, I just want to go over our agenda very, very quickly. Um, first, we'll kick it off with GEM's recruiting program manager, Georgina Frazier. She's going to be walking us through her business case for GEM and nurturing GEM's talent pool. Then um, I'm going to pass it over to GEM's product manager, Katarina, who's going to give you some additional insights and context into the features within GEM that can help you re-engage with uh, your own candidates. After that, we'll save some time at the end uh, for some Q&A where, where you can ask not only Katarina questions, but also um, the folks on our CSM team that we have here today, as well as the rest of our product team. So it's a great time to, to get any questions that you have answered. Um, and with that said, if you do have any questions at any time during the event, please leave them in the chat um, and we'll do our very best to get to them before we wrap up today. Then we'll move into the last portion of our event, which is the community sharing forum slash breakout rooms. Um, this is a perfect opportunity to ask your, peer question, ask your peers questions, um, learn from each other, share what you're doing, um, whether you're feeling unsure about something or you want to hear what others are doing, getting a second opinion, whatever it might be. Um, this is the perfect place and it's sort of a staple that we've had for a lot of our virtual events these past few months. Next, I'm going to pass it over to Georgina, who's going to share with us details around her project for nurturing candidates. Um, she'll share everything from why her and the team decided to begin nurturing, especially in the midst of COVID, um, even though we didn't really have any open roles at that time. Um, and then also as a disclaimer, this is a fairly new project for Georgina and our team. Um, but we think this is a really great time for you to actually see the product in action and, and what it looks like and also see how an actual recruiter is using it in their workflow, which is probably a little bit more helpful than um, us just kind of talking to you about it um, freeform like this. So um, again, she'll share what she's learned so far, uh, how it looks within the product, what they're keeping an eye on, um, and all that really great stuff. And again, as a reminder, if anyone has any questions throughout her presentation, just leave them in the chat and uh, we'll be sure to get to them either after her presentation or during the Q&A. So um, Gigi, I'll pass it over to you. Awesome, hi everyone. Um, so excited to talk to you about our very new um, Nurture project. Um, so I'm sure everyone knows, but we're defining Nurture as building and maintaining relationships with talent over the long haul, right? So all of your follow-up messages after that initial sequence is over. Um, the things that I'm going to cover today, um, like Marissa said, you know, why the team and I decided to nurture, um, how I'm nurturing within GEM, I'm actually going to show you what that looks like, um, and then I'm going to show you what I've learned. So I guess first I should start talking about um, why we did decided to nurture. Um, and for me, I'm always committed to building authentic relationships and nurturing talent that will be around for years to come. This could be because I'm a Leo, but we're not here to talk about that today. Um, but ultimately, my goal is to build relationships so they will come to work at gym one day. Um, another reason the team and I decided to nurture is to get a head start on building talent pipeline. Um, recruiting trends and Jim's resources say it takes between 12 to 20 touch points to influence a career decision. So nurturing is great for this. Um, so then when that next role does occur, it can be really quick to fill it with talent that you've been nurturing all along. Um, lastly, this is the best time to make sure your pipeline is diverse, um, however your team defines it. Uh, here at GEM, we care a lot about diversity, so much so it is one of our core values. Um, and we always do 100% outbound sourcing for diverse talent. Um, defining nurture, or defining nurture, defining diverse as women and unrepresented or URM talent. Um, and we know that across tech companies, URMs are two of the most unrepresented groups, so I hope you all will work with me to change that. Um, so now let's talk about um, how we built the nurture strategy. Um, because we had extra time, um, we decided to first speak with um, our team. Um, and even though Jim makes it really easy to see your team's efforts, um, you don't need to replicate all of them. Um, and so, and also you could probably glean some really important insights, get a copy of their sequence um, and find team members that will work with you um, on your project. Um, and so because of the conversations with the team, we actually got some of our magnificent sourcers involved to help us craft um, some outreach. Um, and my favorite part of this project was actually bringing in our recruiting generalists and helping them hone their recruiting um, sourcing and, and sequencing skills. 
Uh, then we met with our GNA hiring managers to figure out which one of those roles would be open the soonest. Um, the CSM and AE roles are two that we continuously hire for and concluded that they would probably be open the soonest. Um, lastly, give yourself a deadline. <laughs> um, this is a daunting project, so I gave myself really manageable pieces and deadlines each and every week. Um, normally, I would add physically attending events to um, my nurture strategy on top of this work in GEM, um, which is something I've had a lot of success with finding um, technical URM talent. But because of COVID um, and physically being in Oklahoma at this time, um, decided, I'm deciding to buckle down on these nurture efforts within GEM. All right, so let me talk to you guys about how I am categorizing um, my nurture strategy in GEM. So we're deciding to break these into four different projects. Um, the first one is referrals and connections. These are candidates a GEM knows or has referred or candidates that are connected with a GEM on LinkedIn. Um, we're actually asking our teammates to reach out and make sure that they're continuing to develop their own relationships with future GEMs or let us know if we can send a sobo for them in GEM. Uh, the second bucket is candidates who have interviewed and we want to stay in touch with. Um, so uh, these are not only candidates we want to re-engage but previous employees that we want to come back and work for GEM. The third bucket is cold source candidates and these are prospects we've reached out to with no response. Um, and then the warm sourced bucket is um, sequences that have been sent out with a positive response, like not now, but maybe later. Awesome. And for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the warm source candidate bucket. So let's take a look at what this looks like in Gen. So what you see here is a snapshot of the warm source nurture sequence. Um, and one thing you might notice is I selected the nurture category in my sequence type, and that's at the very top of your screen. Um, and if you click on the drop down arrow, it will also give you the option to select sourcing or event for your sequence type. Um, so I would be mindful of which category you're selecting. Um, another thing you might notice is in the first sentence, I acknowledge the effects of COVID, right? Like social distancing is hard for me. So I want to call that out as well. Um, in the third sentence, I call out that we're not actively hiring at the moment, but I would like to chat about their future career aspirations. Um, and in my email signature, I wrote um, pound BLM. Um, and I'm pointing to these examples because we started to nurture last month while we were and are still in the middle of social unrest. And so I want to call out anything that may be top of mind and also be as transparent as possible. Um, a few other things to note, I have four sequences. Um, some people argue three is enough, but we can debate that in the conversation question box later. Um, and in uh, the stages after this sequence, I link to our blog post. Um, I'm gonna point out how well the sales team is doing during COVID. Um, and my sequences are spread out over five to six days after the first email. Um, and you know, some of Jim's research has shown that sales candidates react better to emails on the weekends. Um, and that's why I chose the five to six days after. Um, and then I also want to assume that each prospect or candidate may be reading the sequence on their phone. So I want to make the sequence like as short as possible. Um, in my last sequence, I'm calling this my breakup sequence. Um, and I'm calling out what is top of mind. So for Gem right now, that is our most recent Series B announcement. Um, then I asked them to add me on LinkedIn and end with a really cute picture of my coworker's puppy. Because um, who doesn't love puppies? So last but not least, let me show you what I've learned and how we're tracking everything. Um, so we are tracking these efforts in my outreach stats in GEM, um, and that's the snapshot you see. Um, at the top of the screen, I'm filtering this report by project. Um, and then adding a CSM report from last year and then the nurture strategy from this year. Below that, I selected the date range um, from when I first sent out that, sequ that CSM sequence last year all the way to this date. Um, next to that, on the right side of the screen, I selected overall for my chart view. Um, so now let's talk about the numbers. Um, you can see that even though I reached out to fewer prospects this year, 
um, more have actually opened my email, um, I'm attributing this to COVID. Um, and if you click back into your project, you can actually see specifically which links they're clicking on. Um, and my interested rate is down, but I believe this is because I'm, category, I'm categorizing interested as a phone call with me. Um, the other category I'm using for interested is, um, you know, follow up later and then assigning myself a due date for those prospects, right? So if I combine those two, I probably would have a higher um, interested rate. Um, and, you know, folks that are saying, um, folks that I'm categorizing in the follow up later um, bucket, they're replying to me and saying, I love Jim. I'm not interested in a call, but, you know, reach out to me when you do have a role open. Hey, so Gigi. at least they're reading my emails. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gigi, the slide is a little blurry. I think it might just be on my end, but if you, can you read the numbers just um, for my sake, maybe, maybe others? I sure can. So CSM from 2019 is contacted 251. Um, and then this year, 215. Opened 142 from last year. Um, open rate, I think that's 57%. Um, and then 84% replied. Replied rate, 37%, I believe. It's kind of blurry for me as well. Actually, I have the high fidelity version. Um, so uh, it looks like uh, open rate was 57% last year and is up to 71% this year. Um, and then the reply rate was 33% last year and is 22% this year. And then the interested rate, which Gigi just mentioned is being calculated, or she's calculating it differently this year, uh, is 15% last year and 7% this year. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. And to conclude, um, we're still at the very beginning of this work. <laughs> Um, and it is ongoing. It's actually, we've actually only been doing it for the past month. Um, our plan is to check in on the data and the findings at least once a month. Um, and personally, I'm committed to um, relationship building because I know that my community is under-resourced, um, even more so during COVID. So if anything, I wanna be a resource, whether I have a role or not. Um, and these campaigns are like the few steps towards getting us to those 12 to 20 touch points. Um, we know those touch points will influence someone's career decision, and so it, it not only gives us time to, to get them to respond to us, right, but it also gives us time to convince your own talent to come and work with us. Um, and I actually believe that everyone at your company is nurturing candidates, right? Like every time someone talks to another person about your company, um, that's a nurture. Um, so be creative in your nurture strategy. Thanks, y'all. Awesome. Thank you, Gigi, for, for going through, um, you know, what you guys are doing right now. It was really great to see. Um, again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. We will, um, uh, we'll get to them during our Q&A section in, in just a bit. Um, but for now, if we don't have any questions, I will go ahead and pass it over to um, Katerina. Let me get my slides forward. Um, Katarina is going to be walking through just a little bit more in depth in, into what you can do to, to nurture candidates within GEM um, and talk a little bit more about that there. But before I move into that, just another call out to please uh, check into the event today. Um, we have the networking list, we have the raffle for, or the drawing for the Uber Eats gift cards, so definitely won't want, want to miss out on that. Um, but now I'll pass it over to you, Katarina. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks, Gigi. Um, so just reiterating one more time uh, that the average prospect takes a lot of work to convert from passive to active. Um, it's that 12 to 20 touch points over a long period of time that can convert someone who wasn't thinking about your company to someone who is actually ready to take a phone call. Um, and so especially right now, uh, it's really important to build pipeline and brand recognition even before Rex open. Um, shorten the cycle once the recs do open um, and then you can maintain or rebuild pipeline with pre-vetted talent so you've already talked to these people you already know they're qualified um, and then so once those recs open you can just push them in uh, next slide so we're going to go over three areas uh, or strategies that you can um, nurture candidates with inside of GEM. Thanks, Marissa. Um, so the first one is talent community. Um, and so here we see Policy Genius has a few recs open. 
Um, but if the timing isn't right, or there's no role that's open, no rec open that fits right now, um, candidates can join a talent network. So what's great about this is candidates might be sort of passively looking. They're definitely interested in your company. Um, so they're probably someone that you want to stay in touch with. Um, and you can do this through, um, you know, what we call talent branding or talent marketing um, through mailing lists. But you can also just send them um, stuff from your blog in case you don't have a dedicated talent marketing team. Uh, once those candidates come in, it's also really helpful to put them inside of talent pools so that when those recs do open up, you can be ready again to hit the ground running. Uh, next slide. Um, finding prospects to re-engage. So this one, um, for uh, customers that have the prospects uh, module um, is a great way to find candidates that were somewhat interested at some point. So they may have opened up emails. Um, maybe they even clicked on a link. So you know they know who you are <laughs> and you wanna talk to them again. Um, and this is also another great way to catch um, all of the candidates that said, thanks uh, for reaching out to me. Uh, your company sounds interesting. Now is not the right time. Please reach out to me at the beginning of next year. Um, maybe you had set a due date for them and you forgot to <laughs> send them something. This is a great way to catch uh, all of those people and follow up with them again. Um, and then there's also, th there's many, many things you can do with prospects, um, but uh, silver medalists is also a great way, finding, finding the silver medalists is a great way um, to really shorten the cycle as well. So um, if you have greenhouse, uh, there's an import to gem function where you can bulk import candidates that made it to final rounds or even just made it onto on sites and see whether or not um, uh, anything has changed. Uh, and then if you don't have greenhouse, we have CSV imports. So if you can just pull that list of candidates, put them into a project, uh, they're ready for a new sequence. Uh, next slide. Um, and then finally, uh, of course, keeping in touch. So we mentioned mailing lists earlier, um, but oftentimes the most powerful touch points are really those one line check-ins where the candidate said, follow up with me in six months, and then you actually do follow up with them in six months. Um, so we do have this set and forget uh, nurture sequence type uh, that allows you to sequence uh, to, to thread a nurture sequence onto your um, previous sequence. So if a candidate replies and says, please follow up with me in six months, you can go ahead and select your nurture sequence uh, from the Gmail sidebar um, and then set and forget it. And then we know there's sometimes some recs that uh, are not uh, evergreen or they might be more sensitive and they're very, very specific to a very specific point in time. For those, maybe you do set the due date and then again, <laughs> If uh, that due date passes and you kind of forget what you set it for, there is a way to find them again through prospects. Thanks. Um, really quickly, so Katarina talked about uh, talent networks. So uh, myself and Lauren, who's our kind of our go-to content person at GEM, uh, we're working on a best practices for kind of creating a talent network and also just more content around just nurture strategies. I think that we're likely gonna release that um, best practices post um, either late this week or early next week. So just keep a lookout for that. Awesome, thank you Viet and thank you Katarina. Um, at this time, again, we're just gonna open it up for, for questions from anyone here. Um, we did get a few that were submitted during registration that we do wanna call out, but if you have any that you wanna ask, um, feel free to just throw it in the chat, uh, come off mute. Um, we'd love to hear it. Um, let me pull up my questions. Sorry, folks. All right. Um, one of the first questions that came up, um, Sarah Ku, this one is for you. It was from Charles at Pure Storage. Um, and he wants to know what's on the roadmap for Gem. So is there, is there anything exciting that you can share here? Yeah. Hey, Charles. Thanks for asking that. That's a great question. Um, given that we're focused on the topic of nurture today, I'll probably keep this... Um, roadmap preview focused on nurture functionality specifically, but if you are more curious about the broader roadmap, of course, we can chat more about that another time. 
Um, but on the nurture front, when we think about some of the new features that we added to Gem recently, like the ones that Katarina mentioned about being able to thread nurture sequences together with your previous correspondence so that your prospects understand the context of why you're reaching out again. Um, if we think about all the different ways that um, our customers have been using their talent communities with all these signups that are coming in, uh, just from people who say, hey, I am interested in your company, but I don't really know where I would fit in. Um, all these different kinds of ways of nurturing uh, really lend themselves well to the fact that Gem um, should also keep these prospect records up to date. So if you've ever run into the case where you might have sourced a candidate uh, three years ago, maybe, and you're running into them again because they look great for that Android engineering role, um, and if anything, maybe they look better now because they actually have more experience. Well, it might turn out that they're not actually at the same job they were three years ago when you first sourced them and added them to Gem. But Gem still says that they work at Airbnb, and that might not be true anymore. So you need to go back to their LinkedIn profile to see what's their current title, what's their current company, are they even working these days or are they, you know, traveling the world for a year on sabbatical or something like that? All of that, uh, all of that information would be great to keep up to date in GEM um, without you having to reopen that LinkedIn profile again, right? Um, so this idea of refreshing data within GEM has a, is a really, really big one that's come up, particularly in the context of nurture, where you should be going through your old prospects, those old projects that you worked so hard to put together and um, really, really want to go resource those prospects all over again. So we'll be working on, on this concept of data refresh towards the end of the year. Um, and we certainly will be reaching out to lots of you for feedback on exactly how we should do that and provide the best experience in GEM. One of the other things that we're really keen to look into and we're starting to explore right now is um, pushing harder on this idea of, of helping you guys promote your own talent brands. Um, particularly right now where long-term nurture is ever more important, um, this idea of putting ri uh, pushing richer content to your prospects rather than just personalized one-off emails about, hey, are you interested in this job? Um, is something that's come up a lot across a lot of you guys, a lot of our customers. Um, so thinking about how to incorporate um, branded emails, for example, if you want to make your outreach look a little bit um, less personalized, but more professional, a little bit snazzier with your your company's branding as the as the email header, maybe some fancy images or links or formatting that you can use to, to spruce up those um, sequences. Um, and potentially have like, let's say one master sequence, one master talent marketing sequence that someone on your team or maybe like a marketing liaison is putting together with, um, you know, sort of evergreen content like life at gem blog posts or, you know, recent news, your fundraising, fundraising announcement, um, links to messages from the CEO and things like that, that would, you know, slowly make their way to the prospects over time, maybe once a month for a year or two years, um, but eventually really just work as a way to reinforce your brand and your image in their minds so that when the timing is right, as Katarina mentioned, 12 to 15 touch points down the road or nine months down the road, um, when they're going from passive looking to active looking, those prospects um, have your brand, your company top of mind, and they remember how how awesome you know that blog post from Twilio was, or how awesome that uh, employee spotlight from Dropbox was. So those are two of the things that we're looking to explore further. Um, all of course with your guys' input, and if you have any ideas in particular about either of those things or other ideas that you would like to see us pursue, I am all ears always. So just shoot me an email after this, and we can we can chat more about what else would be helpful for you guys to help nurture your candidates. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. Um, another question that came in, um, and a reminder, feel free to send questions in, folks. Um, but another question that came in was from Anna at TalkDesk, and she was asking, um, has the pandemic revealed any change on email response rates? Um, I'll answer this one. We actually recently just did a webinar on our 2020 tech recruiting benchmarks report, um, where we kind of just uh, pulled some of, some of the most uh, interesting data there and shared it in a webinar. Um, and something that we actually included in the webinar that wasn't in the report um, was some data that we pulled from the March to June period um, and how COVID has been, has been affecting things. Um, so you can check it out to see to see what what it includes there in regards to COVID. Um, we talked about um, outreach and response rates. Um, I'll leave the link in the chat. Um, let me let me click that right here. Um, so I highly recommend y'all go check it out. 
um, and, and see what's, what, 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 what we've been seeing and trending um, the past few months there. Um, one more question that I have, and Georgina, this one is for you, is from Amy at Cruz. Um, and she's wondering, do you find that the quality of outreach provides high response rates rather than volume outreach? Um, so essentially, is it, is it worth taking the time to tailor each of those outreach emails? Yes. Um, this is something that Jim has analyzed. Um, and we see an average personalization produces a 34% increase. Um, for folks. And I would challenge you to take a look back at your outreach stats, right, um, and compare them with other sequences in GEM, and that should let you know for sure. Um, and when writing sequences, you know, I try to put myself in the other person's position, right, like what would I want to see besides jokes and, and pictures of puppies. Um, and one thing we did notice during last week, um, group of sequences is that people would respond more warmly, right, like even if they were saying, hey, I'm not interested, um, they'd say, you know, please follow up later. Um, and there is more information on this exact topic in Jim's webinar, Mastering the Art of Outreach Emails. Um, and I can link that in the chat as well. Cool, thanks, Gigi. Um, now uh, we're gonna actually move into our breakout rooms. I don't see any additional questions in here coming through. Um, so I think we're good. Let me share my screen really quick. Where is it? Here we go. Awesome. Um, so again, uh, these are our breakout rooms. They're actually a, a very, a, a staple item for all the virtual events that we've been doing lately. Um, when we're all together in this big group, uh, you'll see the conversation prompts here on the screen. Uh, so I highly recommend maybe if you want, uh, feel free to take a screenshot in case you want to refer back to it. Um, I believe everyone here should actually have a gem person in their group, so they'll also have the prompts in case anyone forgets those as well. Um, but we'll, you'll find yourself in a breakout room with maybe four to five other people, and we'll be in there for about 10 minutes. Um, I highly recommend you all take a minute or two just to introduce yourself, your name, what company you're with, and kind of dive right into the discussion. Um, I will say, though, these questions are just guides for conversation, absolutely not mandatory. If something else comes up that you guys want to discuss or it's more relevant for you, please feel free to do so. Um, this is just meant to have some meaningful conversation here. Um, once the 10 minutes are up, everyone will be automatically pulled back into the breakout room or sorry, back into the main room. I'm going to start separating out everyone out into breakout rooms. It'll probably take anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds for everyone to really get situated and settled into their groups. So um, just give it a second, but I'll see you all in about uh, 10 minutes. Included in nurture sequences, as well as who does that content come out from and what cadence uh, that should come out from. So I'm curious to hear if folks have thoughts on that. Everyone, anyone come off mute? What, what? Um. I'm happy. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm happy to chime in there. Um, one of the things that we discussed in our breakout group, and we were lucky enough to have Georgina in our group, um, we were mentioning how we love the intro of like making it a little bit more personal in terms of like, how are you coping with COVID instead of like a standard of like, it's so weird right now. Um, and then additionally, kind of like, just sort of like the, the other personal touches, um, the pictures of the puppies. 100%. I'm all aboard on that one. So I'm going to be fully stealing that idea from now on. Um, it, it's not new, it's just something that I wanted to kind of re highlight because it was a great idea. Awesome. Um, I know this is actually a question I see a lot um, from folks who attend our events. Is they're, they're always asking like memes, pictures, emojis, and subject lines. like do they actually work? So is there anyone else here that wants to maybe share their experience with doing it? And I'm sure it probably varies between like industries and roles and those types of elements, but I'd love to hear maybe what others have experienced there. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it, it can't hurt. <laughs> so. That's true. I've used a, um, I used a, an emoji that's actually the, the red dot. So if you scroll way down, there's a red dot. And um, I heard this from someone at a conference that said that if you use that, then essentially it looks like there's a to-do item in, uh, in your inbox that never goes away. So 
whether or not it's subconscious or not, it makes it look like you need to respond to it and do that. Um, so that has been something that I've tried and it actually does work really well. Totally. Yeah. I think we, so my subject line I always use when I source a gem is just first name, comma, you're a gem, exclamation mark, and then the gem emoji. But just like, if you look at your inbox, like you don't really have very many emojis. And so anything that stands out in the inbox like, is naturally going to just catch your attention, um, regardless of what the emoji is. I think. But the red dot actually makes a ton of sense. Awesome. Anything else anyone want to share? Any other gems that, that heard some interesting stuff that they want to call out? Uh, yeah, uh, Shafi, I don't mind. I hope you don't mind uh, that I uh, mention what you talked about. So Shafi's a technical recruiter at Benchling, and he does a lot of personal uh, personalization on some of these nurture campaigns that he does. So um, he'll look up whether or not engineers have uh, maybe they have filed patents that are relevant to Benchling. So he can say like, you know, basically we know who you are. Um, you know, maybe right now isn't the time to talk, but we think that you'd be, a, we know you'd be a really great fit because of project X that you've done or patent Y that you've filed. Um, so, you know, just letting you know that we know who you are. We think you'd be a great fit. And if you ever think about, um, moving roles, we can always just have an exploratory conversation or, you know, I'll reach out to you later. Um, but it's, it's really, really specialized. And I'm not even explaining it that well, but like, it, it really sounded like it was something where you cared about the candidate's uh, career and you really, really personalized it. Awesome. Thanks, Katarina. Um, Anyone else say that, that wants to share anything? We do have a few more minutes on the clock, so we can we can leave it open for, for more discussion here. Uh, I have a question. I'm curious about, uh, I'm taking it off of nurture if that's okay. I'm, gonna, I'm curious okay. about like data tracking when it comes to DNI. and um, Right now it's uh, gender-based. Is there, is there any way, is there any talk of uh, kind of increasing it or making it so that it can be opt-in or opt-out or some kind of manual entry uh, for like better tracking as well as better kind of true data? Yeah. Uh, so are you referring to uh, like the ability to override the the gender or race ethnicity input and not just rely on the gem algorithm to assign it? Yes, well, I, yeah, that's, that's definitely part of it. I think the other part of it is I've noticed that it's mostly for gender-based that it's automatic versus ethnicity. Oh, sorry. Okay, we, Corinne can probably follow up about that later. Uh, but we do have race ethnicity also automatically tracked in gem. We can turn okay. that on. Great question, though. Great plug for that feature as well, in case anyone else doesn't know about that. <laughs> also wondering about like automatic tracking of positive response rates. Uh, yeah. So that the team doesn't have to manually go in and do it because my teammates are lazy and don't care about data like I do. <laughs> so to have that automatically happen like some other products out there would be just amazing. Totally. Yes. Yes, we would love to build that in as well. It's a little bit of a hard problem, but, but I'll definitely on our wish list. Turns out you're not the only one with a lazy team who hates adding the interested status. <laughs> I mean, truth be told, I'm lazy as hell. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks for asking that, Erin. Um, is there anyone else um, that has any questions? Um, if so, feel free to come off mute or send it in the chat. I know Viet actually wants to call something out that he's interested in doing. Viet, you want to share there? Yeah, so like I said earlier, um, I'm working on a blog post on nurture strategies and a large part of nurture strategies is coming up with the content for, for that nurture kind of sequence and such. Um, I want to throw it out there. If anybody's interested in like brainstorming on like coming up with like a, call it a list of, maybe a master list of all the ideas that you could include in a nurture strategy. So like an example might be, 
uh, one minute video of your SDR talking about what it's like to work at your company, like whatever it may be. Like, I'm just trying to compile a list so that like we have a library of things that we can all pick from. Um, and so if anyone's interested in kind of brainstorming on that, uh, please reach out um, and would love to chat more about it. Awesome, thanks yet. Um, we'll do a last call for any questions coming up. Last call, last call. All right, um, well, thank you everyone for joining. We'll, we'll definitely close out a couple minutes early and give you some time before you have to head to your next meeting. Um, and get on with your day. But thank you again for, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and we're, we're happy to, you know, open up these conversations and, and figure out what we can do to um, just uh, get you a little better acquainted with our features and, and what the product can do for you to just help you um, uh, see, see more results. So thank you again for joining. Um, I will follow up with an email later today, maybe tomorrow. Um, with some of the resources we mentioned, the webinars, uh, blog posts, reports that we have out um, kind of related to nurture. Um, I'll also send out a little um, survey for you all to take. I'd really appreciate any feedback here. Again, this is pretty new for us moving these user groups virtual. So any feedback that you can share is really, really appreciated. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that's about it. And anyone who opted in for the networking list, I'll definitely send that over your way um, later today. So Thank you again for joining, uh, really appreciate it. And we hope to see you all at our next user group or next virtual event, whenever that is. Um, have a good week, everyone, bye. You too, Marissa. Thanks, Joel, bye. Bye. Bye everyone, thanks.